All right, so welcome to everyone to our International Student Experience Webinar uh, for St. Edwards University. Today is Thursday, April 23rd. It is three o'clock in the afternoon in Austin, Texas. I am so happy that all of you can join us today. My name is David Bernay and I am the uh, Director of International Admission at St. Edwards. And actually we're gonna be joined today by um, several of my colleagues as well as some current students to talk about their experiences at St. Edwards and in Austin. Um, and so really the, the kind of purpose of today's webinar and presentation is to get you some more information about uh, St. Edwards, of course, uh, more, more information about the international experience, what it's like to live in Austin, and we'll talk specifically uh, about next steps for a lot of international students uh, in your plans for to join us this fall. So before we get started, I just wanted to quickly kind of go over some, some real quick points. Um, I'm sure that many of you have used Zoom before, so this is maybe not new, but uh, this Zoom webinar will be together for roughly 30 minutes or so. We will have time for questions at the end. Um, and so if you haven't uh, seen so already, we have in your dashboard a question and answer box that you can use to send questions to us. If you'd like to send them throughout uh, the uh, presentation, you can, um, but you could also wait until the end to ask your questions, that's totally okay. Um, also to let you know, you can submit questions anonymously. You don't have to tell us your name, that's totally okay. Um, we will not be planning to use the chat function. So um, I would not recommend that you send your questions via chat. Um, rather, just go to the question and answer section. All right, J jumped ahead there. So just a, a quick overview of what we're going to discuss today before I introduce my colleagues. So we'll talk about just some kind of introductory information about St. Edwards, about what it's like to be in Austin. Um, and then we'll go just directly to the international students. We have a couple of great international students joining us today. Um, we're very excited to introduce you to. Um, we'll chat about campus life, especially how we support international students on campus at St. Edwards. And uh, I'll introduce you to my colleague from the International Student Services Office. Um, we'll also go over the student visa process. So if you have any questions about that, um, or about how you receive your student visa to study in the United States, we can uh, answer those, but we'll go over that process. Um, and we'll also talk about uh, summer orientation and what arrival may look like for everyone in the fall. And just talk about key dates and key times for our students in terms of arrival and next steps. Um, if you have not already made your decision about what you'd like to do next year, we'll go over that process um, and tell you how to, you can best commit to St. Edwards. Um, and that gets the, uh, of course, the student visa process started. And at the end, we'll have time for question and answer, like I mentioned. So um, feel free to enter your questions at any time that you'd like to. Uh, just some quick introductions. Uh, I will be introducing you to my colleagues in a little bit, um, but you'll see our information is listed here. I am the Director of International Admission at St. Edwards. I've been at St. Edwards for 10 years. Um, uh, I've worked with Leo uh, in an international capacity maybe for five or six years now, and so we make up the International Admission team at St. Edwards. And then Sarah Conlin, who you'll be meeting in a little while, works in the International Student Services Office as the Assistant Director for International Student Experience. Um, and her team also helps with the student visa process. So we're very happy to have all of these colleagues join us today. And then we have some amazing global ambassadors. These are students who are current international students at St. Edwards who also work in the Office of Admission to help us um, you know, reach out to you and to answer your questions. So you may already be familiar with both Fidel and Liz, um, and they're gonna introduce themselves in a little bit um, when we ask them some questions. So thank you both of you for joining us today. I like to start by just kind of talking about some introductory information about St. Edwards. And I know many of you, of course, already know this information because um, you are admitted to St. Edwards already, of course. So um, just some quick, over, quick overview of, this, of, of St. Edwards. We uh, are a medium-sized institution, so around 3,700 students. Um, what's nice about that, of course, and Leo and I talk about this all the time, is that, especially for international students, many of you are coming from schools that are small, small in size. Um, the typical class size at St. Edwards is around 19 students. Um, the most important thing for our students is that you have access to your professors and that, and I think Liz and Fidel will probably echo this when, when, they, when they speak in a little bit, um, but that is such an important part of your university experience is getting to have mentors on campus, being able to connect to your professors um, in an accessible way, right? We have over 50 areas of study and if you have questions about majors, we're happy to answer them too. 
Um, Fidel is studying kinesiology, Liz is studying psychology, but um, Leo and I uh, also have great knowledge about different majors at the university. It's really important to note that most of the classes in all the majors are very small. Um, we don't have lecture courses at St. Edwards with many, many students. Maybe the biggest class that you'll have is probably 30 to 35 students in your time on campus. Um, of course, international uh, uh, life on campus is really diverse, it's robust. We have 57 languages spoken on campus and we have 57 countries represented. I think even on this call today, I think we had students from 20 different countries sign up. So um, thank you all of you for joining us. And as a reminder, if it's too late where you are, it's okay too. We can send out a recording of this uh, later to you and we plan on doing so. But we have 7% of our population at St. Edwards that is coming from outside the US. Um, and that doesn't even include the US citizens who come from abroad. Um, so these are the international students purely coming from outside the United States. Um, but you also see that we have great representation from when within the US um, and also um, uh, great, great different uh, diversity in terms of religions on campus um, and quite a number of international faculty. Um, there's a lot to do on our campus and um, our students I'm sure will, will tell you about their experiences. We have over 100 student organizations. We have some amazing NCAA Division II teams. Um, if you don't know already, our mascot is a goat. Um, which is a very uh, fun and scary looking creature. Um, so our, um, one of our slogans is fear the goat on campus. And um, we'll talk about the goat a little bit later maybe. Um, all types of sports and activities available for students and great events and traditions. So St. Edward is an amazing place to spend four years. I'm excited to um, tell you more about that. Um, and you know, another reason that students come to us is really Austin as well. Of course, we are based in the city of Austin, which is the capital of Texas. Now, Austin has over a million people. It's the 11th largest city in the United States, but we kind of think it's this, this kind of big city with a small town feel. Um, it's a place where you still feel like it's your hometown, even if you're not from Austin. It just feels like home, especially for a lot of our international students. Um, Austin's known for a couple things. It's um, definitely a hub for entertainment. We are the live music capital of the world. Um, we have over 300 music venues in Austin and we're home to some of the world's largest music festivals. So if you've heard of Austin City Limits Music Festival, it's kind of like the Texas version of Coachella. Um, that happens usually in October. And uh, South by Southwest, which is the world's largest conference for technology, music, and film. And that was actually, may have, you may have heard recently, was just made the news as one of the first major conferences to be canceled because of the COVID outbreak where um, you know, Austin and South by Southwest are really paired together and it's uh, put us on the map in a lot of ways. But we're also known for te technology in general. So for example, uh, Austin has, is home to almost 7,000 technology companies, uh, both in digital media, computer, as well as video games. So there's lots of um, amazing industry uh, happening in Austin, one of the fastest growing economies in the US. Um, before, of course, this tragic um, economic and global disaster has hit us, of course. Um, but you know, we can also talk about this in a little bit, but Austin has, throughout its history, um, had a great track record of surviving these types of um, dips in our, in our economy. And so we're hopeful and optimistic that Austin will rebound. Um, so good things about Austin. It's a great place to be. Um, and I'm excited to introduce you to our students and my colleague, Leo, who will talk more about what it's like to be here. Um, Leo, would you like to take over? I'm gonna ask you to put your, your, your video on. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and thank you, David, for getting us started. Um, as David mentioned, I work in the Office of International Admissions. I've been in Austin for 10 years. Before moving to Austin, I was in Tegucigalpa in Honduras where my father lives. My mother actually lives in Nicaragua. Um, so I was an international student who attended St. Edwards and this has become home away from home for me. I'm really happy to have two current students joining us because they can share their uh, genuine experience. Um, we have both Fidel and Liz joining us and many of you may have already heard from them because they work as global ambassadors with the Office of International Admissions and their role is to just connect with you, address questions that as an international student you might have before you arrive at St. Edwards. So know that David, Sarah, Fidel, Liz, and I are all resources um, for you on campus. 
And so with that, I'm going to pass it over to our global ambassadors. I'm going to ask them to think back to when they were seniors, just like you guys are, and they were making a decision. What were some major factors that drove you to choose St. Edwards? And I might ask uh, Liz to start us off. Hi, I'm Liz. So one of the major reasons I decided to join St. Edwards was because it was so small. And I liked that I would have um, a person-to-person -person relationship with my professors. And I also loved um, how there were like so many resources. And I knew this because I had some friends already in St. Edwards. Um, and they had so uh, good relationships with their professors. And that was like a great experience for them. So that was very important for me. Um, Liz did a good job pointing out a few things that stood out to me as well. Oh, hi, I'm Fidel. Thank you for joining us. Um, a lot of reasons actually made me want to join St. Edwards University and get my degree here. And some of those reasons are I'm an athlete. So yeah, that got me to visit the campus and I really liked it. It, it seemed like a place where I, I want to go to school and it's beautiful. It's a small school. I want to get to know my professors. I want them to know that I'm not in class and they check on me, which is what they do here. And it's great. Not a lot of schools do that because the classes are so small, the class size is small. Professors reach out to you to see, first of all, they ask if you're okay before they want to know why you're not in class, you know? So those things really meant a lot to me and how a lot of students that didn't know I was just an athlete visiting, they were so friendly. Hi, how are you? Do you like the campus? Do you want to come here? So those things really warmed my heart and I knew that I wanted to come here. Thank you both for sharing. And uh, you know that, that message resonates with me because it's so important for international students to have that feeling of community. And that's what we are at St. Edwards. We're a tight-knit community. We're a strong community. And that's what um, will welcome you to uh, the university when, when you move to Austin. So we have a great picture up. Um, this is a picture from the hilltop. And you see downtown. We are five kilometers south of downtown, which is just close enough for you to enjoy the city, to plug into internships, to have fun. David mentioned Austin City Limits. Some of the, the top musicians in the country come from Austin and many come and play at that festival. So uh, Liz and Fidel, would you mind sharing with international students what they can expect from the city of Austin, having it right there in their backyard? Yes, um, Austin is a city, yes, and it's the capital you would think that because it's a city, then you will not be able to get to a lot of places. No, it's small and it's big at the same time. You just really have to know what you want to do and you know where you want to go. But the great thing about the city of Austin is that there's a lot of things for you to do. You just have to figure it out. You have to tell yourself, okay, today I'm going to go to the lake and it's right there. Today I want to go see birds fly. It's right there, the bridge and anything, it's, it's here. And, I like it because internships, which is a huge thing that St. Edwards wants the student to, you know, be able to experience before they graduate, you can apply to a couple, a lot of internships here. And businesses are out there, you can apply to jobs here. Austin is the place that you want to be because it's not too crazy and you can uh, do just about anything here. And I like it. I've applied to internships myself. I'm waiting to hear from them, but due to the COVID-19, I don't know that I'm able to do those right now, but just know that you can achieve anything in the city of Austin. Thank you, Fidel. Um, yeah, I agree with you. It's a really amazing city, and I love that it's uh, full of diversity. It's really a modern city, and it's a good environment. Um, I love to go to the to see the nature. There's a big Park called Silker Park. You can go with your friends, have a picnic, go to, for a walk at downtown. It's pretty, pretty beautiful. And also, as you said, um, the internships, not only you have a lot of opportunities, but Senet's, um has a career service 
where you can go there and they will help you get your internship. And also your classes and your professors are really helpful with that. So you have like the doors really open for those activities and internships and experiences. So it's pretty awesome. And if you love food just as much as I do, Thank you, you guys. will be able to eat here. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's true. We're a foodie town and you guys spoke to the balance that we have because we're so close to the city that you can enjoy it, but you're far enough away. Those five kilometers gives you the right amount of distance to really focus on your studies when you need to. So, so let's bring it back to campus. Um, as a freshman, you're required to live on campus. You had that transition from home to the university. Um, what's campus life like? What are the residence halls like? And I think, uh, Fidel, you currently live on campus, so you can tell us about your, your years on campus. And then Liz, do you live off campus, is that right? So you can tell us about yeah. what it was like freshman year and then um, moving forward that second year. So just tell us about life on campus. Um, and Life on campus uh, to me is very, it's fun because I get to, I feel like I'm in the middle. My hall is in the middle of campus. So it's easy for me to go to my classes and not be late, don't be late to your classes. Those, uh, that is very important to me. And also being on campus gives me that safety feel. I feel so safe being on campus right here. I, I love it so much. And the halls are great. You have your, your roommates. As a freshman, yes, you're required to stay on campus and you have your freshman halls and all that, that's where you actually create uh, the kind of life you want to have uh, at St. Edwards. You make friends that you choose to, um, you make those friends and you decide if you want to remain friends with them or not. But being the community that St. Edwards is, you want to remain friends with them because they're either pushing you to do better, they're pushing you to reach your goals, and they're just, on the same path as you wanting to do something great. There's nobody here who's pushing you to do something that you're not, that is not going to benefit your future. So that has helped me a lot. I've made a lot of friends here. We have international students from my country and my continent. So I've met them and I, I'm still friends with them and I'm a junior right now. So campus is great. The food is there, the cafeteria is there. We have two. And it doesn't matter what hall you live on campus you live in, you will be able to get to one of those because they're closer to you. So those things are a huge factor to me and the gym is right there. If you like to work out like I do, you can just go to the gym and it's very close by. I and the gym is new. Yeah, so um, I had both experience. So I lived in uh, the residence halls in freshman year and at first, the transitioning wasn't that easy since moving from your country, missing your family, it was a little bit hard, but I had like all the resources, the counselors being there for you, my teachers and all my friends being in the same place. So that was comfortable for me. And at the same time, um, living on campus was one of the most amazing experience I've ever had um, since we were in the same environment, we were with the same goals, and that's where I made most of my friends. Um, freshman year, you are there to start um, making new friends. Um, you really um, start knowing more of the culture and diversity in campus, and it's really, really welcoming. And then, um, I'm a senior right now, so after freshman year, I moved into some apartments that are in off campus, but it's like 10 minute walking distance. Um, and I moved, moved there with my friends. So it was kind of, I still feel that I live on campus, but I don't since it's really nearby. And I like uh, to have both experiences and it's pretty awesome. Thank you, Liz, and thank you, Fidel. And before we, we let you guys go, um, we're so appreciative of your time. We wanted to see if you guys could uh, leave with some knowledge. Uh, so what are some things that you wish you knew as a senior before you made your decision? 
or any knowledge that you can pass uh, down to these seniors that are, are looking to say networks might be joining us, um, are deciding whether to join us? What are some things that you'd wish you'd known as a senior in high school? Um, I wish I'd, I wish someone told me before coming here to visit how awesome St. Edward is. I know that sounds cliche, but it's actually great to go to school here. And another thing I wish I knew before coming here is how resourceful the school is, the staff, everyone here, and your friends, how much they can help you get to whatever it is you want to do. And also how, um, they treat their international students. I'm not saying this so you can come here. No, this is from experience. It's great. The fact that they take care of you, they try as much as they can to make sure you're okay and you have everything you need. They have answers to every question. All you have to do is send an email or walk to the international student's office. Whatever questions you have, the person you're talking to, if they don't know it right away, there's somebody that is coming to provide the answer to you. So I wish I knew those things before coming. I knew that I wanted to come here, but those things would have, you know, pushed me uh, harder to even make my decision. But I'm glad that I know those things now because I value it more. If I had known it then, I'd be like, okay, they have it, all right. But now it makes me appreciate it more, so yes. So thank you, Fidel. I agree with you. Um, I knew there were a lot of resources since that was one of the things that were driving me to come here, but I didn't know they were so great, as you said. Um, also, I wasn't able to come to campus and I wasn't, I can't, the first time I came to Austin was like when I was like five years old. So I don't really, didn't really remember and it has changed, obviously, but I didn't know how Austin was. So I wished I had known how beautiful and diverseful this city is. So that will drive me 100% to this city and this part, this school. And also um, something I would like to know um, is the how we arrange the schedules for classes. So I didn't know that we could choose like the hours and there were like diversity um, between the classes. I just thought that I will have like the same schedule and that will be it. But you have uh, opportunities um, to put your classes on the hours you want to and that's pretty cool. Thank you both for, for your time today and um, with this we conclude the Global Ambassadors portion but know that they are resources for you on campus, as am I. And now I pass it back over to uh, our Director of International Admissions, David. Thank you so much to our Global Ambassadors. Please stay on if you can, if you have the time, because I'm sure that you'll uh, get some questions at the end. Um, but for now, I'm gonna switch it uh, over to Sarah Conlon, who works in our International Student Services Office. Hey everyone, it's really fun to have the opportunity to connect with you this way before you uh, arrive on campus. I know I've been in touch with some of you by email as you um, go through the admissions process um, Then we'll move on to start talking about your student visa. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about campus life. I think um, Fidel and Liz talked a little bit about um, how much fun Austin is and how much is going on on campus and I second that it's hard to figure out what event to go to sometimes because there's so many um, happening every day. Um, this year to celebrate Earth Day earlier this week, we had a speaker from Germany who was planning to come. We still had him come speak with us online. He's um, an advisor to the German Chancellor and Angela Merkel um, about climate change. So that was really cool. We have these high level academic speakers and we also have really fun events. We think both are important and um, having fun forming a community is kind of part of settling in and exploring and being successful as a student. So we'll talk a little bit about a couple events I wanna highlight. Um, one that we did that was really fun was we had some um, dance instructors come out and give um, salsa lessons um, for the campus in front of our main building. Um, even some of our science professors came out and danced together, which was really cute to see. 
Um, David and Leo's offices are actually in that building. So probably it was a little bit distracting for them, but I had a great time and will need a few more lessons before I am a professional salsa dancer. Um, we also think it's important, like Fidel mentioned, to um, explore the food scene when you're in a new place. Um, I don't know if any of you have experience with Texas barbecue already. I moved from another state where we don't have Texas barbecue. Um, so when I was new here, I didn't know how to order it or what to expect. <laughs> I think um, I wanna save you from um, the feeling of uh, embarrassment of not knowing, knowing how to order barbecue. You can see it's usually served on um, paper like that, really casual. Um, it's also ordered by weight and there's special names for the different types of um, dishes. So we can all go together um, to a really famous um, Texas barbecue restaurant and order um, together to get some practice and feel confident. Um, Austin's also a super creative city. Um, and this is a huge parade that happens for Day of the Dead downtown every year uh, in October. So um, this year we all got dressed up and we um, actually had one of the bus um, drivers from the city of Austin come give us a lesson on how to use the bus. I think it's really important to be able to um, confidently navigate the city and know how to get places. So we all took the bus, we all went to the celebration. Anyone can actually sign up to participate in the parade and you see a lot of really um, creative floats like that. Uh, people get really into it. So we have a lot of events like that. They're fun, but also like help you get more confidence um, meeting people, knowing where to go, how to access events and fun things that are happening on and off campus. Um, so many of you have already gotten an email from me or someone from my office about starting the student visa process. If you haven't yet, you'll get an email as soon as you deposit. Um, so we will help you through the paperwork part and then I'll, I'll talk to you just a little bit about the process itself. I don't want to get bogged down in the details, but just to give you an idea, um, you'll get a form from us and then you'll use that information to pay a fee and then you will apply for the visa, filling out a form online. Uh, you'll schedule a visa interview at the nearest embassy. And then that interview itself is really quick. Um, I don't know if Fidel wants to hop back on and talk a little bit about what her visa interview experience was like. Yes, yes, I, I would love to do that. I know some of you are from my continent. I'm African, if you don't know. <laughs> And uh, some of the questions, the visa, the process is actually a little more easier than I thought, at least for me in Nigeria. The questions uh, are funny, just don't get, let them get to you. So you, um, you apply as soon as you get your I-20, like she said, you can apply and you take it with you with a bunch of other documents they ask for. And the questions, are, at least the question that I remember is, uh, where am I going? And in my head, I said, I'm at the U.S. Embassy, right? What else could I be doing? <laughs> but I'm here. I might go into Canada. But yeah, I told them I'm going to the United States and Texas. And they were, okay, yeah, good. You know where you're going. Another question is, uh, how long do you intend staying? I said, until I graduate. So how many years is that? I, I didn't know because school back home is different from here. High school and college, is, it's a lot different. So I said, just when I graduate, you know, those things. And they laugh and he was like, come back on Tuesday for your visa. So it's really easy. Just take your time, calm down and answer all the questions. Thanks for all that's great advice. Right now, some of the embassies are still closed because of the pandemic. And I think that that just makes it even more important to get the paperwork together as early as possible. Um, I think that there might be some wait after the um, embassies reopen and we want to make sure that all of our students are at the front of the line and um, can get their paperwork resolved really quickly. Once you get that visa back from the embassy, um, you'll make your way to Austin and then we'll help you check in and update your immigration record to show that you've arrived. 
Um, so orientation is a big deal here. It's really important for us to make sure that new students feel welcome and know how to get everything that they need. Um, so we actually have two orientations. Um, one is for all new students and you learn school traditions, you meet your advisors, there's welcome events. It's a really great opportunity to take care of all kinds of um, important business like finalizing your class schedule and talking to financial aid and um, just getting to know all of the different resources on campus. And then we also have a special uh, orientation for international students. And that's when we update your um, student visa record. You get to meet everyone. Uh, we'll have some current students there. We also have a practice classroom, which I think is really important. Um, because uh, the style of the classroom really varies a lot um, depending on where you're from and also um, even depending on the school that you're at. So um, this kind of gives you a little chance to, to know what to expect before your first day and just feel really confident about starting the school year knowing um, kind of what to do before classes start and what, uh, what kind of activities professors will have you participating in um, so we want to make sure that you're holistically supported um, to get everything that you need to be successful. And that includes ongoing support. Um, if you want to advance to one more slide. Um, we're here for you for the duration of your uh, stay. So all new international students will um, have a one credit hour class with us after their first semester so that we can stay in touch and talk more about all of the benefits that come with your student visa. We have academic mentoring, one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, I've had students come to me and say like, I have my first presentation um, coming up in America. I don't know what to expect. I'm really nervous. Can I just give you my presentation first to practice? And of course, you can come to my office and uh, do a practice presentation with me. Um, just let me know. Thank you so much, Sarah. I appreciate that. Um, and Sarah will stick around for questions at the end, of course. Um, for, we're just about to wrap up before our question and answers. Just want to uh, say a couple things uh, for those of you who are um, still deciding um, about uh, com committing to St. Edwards for next year. Um, it's important that, of course, you evaluate uh, affordability of the institution. So I want to make sure that everyone knows that they have a financial aid counselor. Um, international students are, of course, um, you are welcome to apply with a CSS profile for uh, additional need-based aid. Um, if you are a U.S. citizen, you can also apply with a FAFSA. Um, and just know that we are here for you. If you have questions about that, feel free to get in touch with us directly. Um, if you are ready to make your commitment to St. Edwards, um, uh, you will go to myhilltop.stedwards.edu and go to make my enrollment deposit. It's $500. And if you submit it by June 1st, you're going to be in good shape. So just as a note for some of you, if you hadn't seen this yet, we have extended your decision date from May 1st to June 1st to give you some additional time given what's going on right now. So um, two days after you submit your enrollment deposit, you'll actually get um, access to what we call Hill Start, which is our module online for students to begin housing sign up as well as orientation registration. So this is uh, a lot of students, if you're joining us now, some of you are already in this step or some of you may have finished Hill Start already, um, but it's a great way for you to understand things that you need to do before arrival. It could be signing up to choose your room. It could be uh, that you're submitting, you know, information about a vaccine that's required uh, for meningitis, for example. There's all kinds of steps that our students need to do before they arrive. So it's super helpful to get involved with that and to complete those as soon as you can. So we are ready for questions. So I'm going to ask all of my colleagues and the students to come back. And I'm going to actually throw this to Leo to read some of the questions aloud that we've that we've received. If you do have questions and you'd like to send them through, please use the question and answer function. One of the great questions we received is how do I meet students uh, before arriving at St. Edwards? And there are a couple of ways to do that. There's an online platform called Zimi, and we will be sending this out. It's Z E E M E um, slash St. Edwards. And there's an online community of students 
that's right there at the bottom. Um, and you can see um, the link, you can connect to students. There's a lot of chats going on, and that's one way to start to build that connection to students that have been admitted to St. Edwards, and some have already decided to attend St. Edwards. There are a couple of other ways for you to continue to familiarize yourself with the university on a personal level. Um, so you have global ambassadors available to you. You also have an opportunity, um, say you want to learn about a very specific topic, we're continuing to host webinars where faculty members are going to be online and you can make a connection there. Um, David and I are both using WhatsApp. Uh, we are both uh, on email. So know that you have resources in us to connect you to those webinars, to connect you to see me. Um, so if you are having trouble building connections, know that those are available and we're here to, to support you. We've received another question um, in regards to financial aid and the CSS profile. So um, the page that David had up in regards to the financial aid officers, if you're an international student, you are eligible to submit the CSS application and be considered for need-based aid. If you are a US citizen who is currently living abroad, you can submit the FAFSA application. If you have questions about uh, how to answer a specific question on one of these applications, we can help you with that as well. We have resources, you see them on here, specifically for CSS profile, everyone who's online right now, is Annie Hinojosa. Um, she speaks Spanish. I know we have a, a few Spanish speakers uh, on this webinar, and she is your direct resource to address CSS concerns. So thank you for submitting that question. So we have a question in regards to orientation, David. I don't know if you'd like to take this one and, and what the format is and the information that we have so far. Great, thanks so much, Leo. So um, I wanna make a, a, just a quick uh, sort of uh, statement about what's been happening and, and um, note that as you can imagine, we are all at our homes right now and that's for good reason. I'm sure all of you are home as well. Um, the university has been taking a lot of uh, precautions um, have has done a lot of advanced planning regarding what will happen in the fall with um, the COVID crisis. Um, and so one of the things that we've done recently to protect our students is that we've moved our orientation from in-person orientation to online orientation this summer. And this is really going to benefit most of our students. Um, most of our peers at, at other institutions are doing the same thing right now. Um, what this will mean is that you'll likely be able to access online modules, um, uh, videos to help you go through the transition and orientation process. You will also have an in-person uh, meeting, a virtual meeting with your academic advisor where you can uh, choose your classes for the fall semester. We're gonna be sending additional information about how orientation will happen in the coming weeks. Um, for, those of, for those of you students, for those of you who have already submitted your enrollment deposit, you should be hearing about this in the next two weeks or so. Um, and the schedule is not quite finished with that yet, but um, we're just putting the pieces in place to, um, to finalize everything right now. Thank you, David. We also received a question in regards to, we received a couple of questions in regards to specific visa issues. Um, and, and questions in regards to their visa status, please refer those to Sarah. You can email us at seu.admit at stedwards.edu. Because those are personal to you, we want you to um, have all of the information that's, that is pertaining to you. So Sarah is going to be the best person to connect with in regards to specific visa questions. Another great question is housing choices. Um, we have currently on our website, um, if you were to Google visit St. Edwards, it will take you directly to uh, a landing page where we have virtual tours of each residence hall. So you can get a feel for, for the residence hall, what the room layout, layouts are like, uh, and begin to get a sense of what residence hall might be the best fit for you. So thank you for that question. Um, we can also 
connect you to one of our global ambassadors who might have uh, an, a, a more personal experience because they might have lived in one of those uh, residence halls. What I'll say, uh, Leo, and I, I know you have experience in the residence halls because Leo was also a student at St. Edwards and he's a graduate of the university. Um, Fidel, please, no, put your camera back on because I want to hear from you as well. But I think res, res life is something that we do really well. And especially because um, we have semi-private living on campus, um, we don't have any students who are sharing bathrooms. Yes. Oh, <laughs> I was trying to get my thing to work. Yes. Uh, the residence halls, as a freshman, of course, you uh, they send you to the freshman hall, yes. But upper class, you can stay anywhere on campus, anywhere you like, and you can choose what roommates. You just have them uh, sign up to the same building as you. But there's a lot of activities that the RDs and the RAs uh, you know, do every now and then. And RD is resident director and RA is a resident assistant who is also a student. You can reach out to them to, you know, ask questions or they help you with whatever you need. And if they don't have the answer, they'll go to the RDs and those people can help you as well. We have uh, nights where we sing, nights where you come out and try different type of foods from every country. We have uh, nights where you just come out and, you know, hang out and listen to music and enjoy your evening while you do homework. So all the residence hall here, there's something for you to do. You just have to come out of your room. <laughs> you know, you just have to step out. But yeah, it's, it's great. You can live anywhere on campus. Thank you. Thank you, Fidel. And that actually answers another question that we had received regarding if, if there was a specific hall that you're required to live in. You actually have choices. So that's why those videos on the website will be important so that you can see the different choices that you have um, and, and you can go from there. We also received, uh, and, and David, you can keep me uh, honest on time here and how much time we have for, for these questions. We have some great questions. We received a great question uh, from Mauricio uh, about any numbers that we have in regards to students uh, and what they're up to after they graduate. So off the top of my head, I can say that uh, around 90% of our students complete an internship or have a meaningful experience before they graduate. And that's because you have a city that's so welcoming to students and it is a city that is used to having young, well-educated professionals among them in the workplace. I'm not saying it's easy to get one of those internships because it's a competitive city. So it's going to make you bring your A game. But we help you get there. We hold mock interviews on campus. Uh, Liz mentioned the Career and Professional Development Office on campus. Students are being gainfully employed. Many students from the state of Texas, where there are some great universities, choose Austin to live after they've graduated. Not only are we one of the best cities to be in as a current student, we're one of the best cities to be in as a recent college graduate because of the opportunities of employment across industries. This is not a city that is focused on one industry. This is a city where you'll find industries in who knew that Austin is a, a video game hub and where our video game development program uh, is rising due, due to it. We are a city that has Google, uh, Facebook has set, uh, a large presence here. Outside of Cupertino, California, Apple has its largest workforce here. So know that a lot of these big names that we all have heard of attract smaller companies and those smaller companies are, are really eager and, and very available for students. So I would add a couple of things to that. Um, and it's, it's, it's really helpful, our normal admission presentation has all this information. Um, but in addition to what Leo said, over 90% of our recent graduates, um, according to our surveys and information and our data, um, report that they are uh, meaningfully engaged after graduation. What that means for us is that those students are either uh, employed full time, um, they have taken a year off to do a volunteer program, or they're in the military, uh, or going to graduate school. So four options there. Um, so um, that is an amazing track record. Our students um, typically will have multiple opportunities each semester to meet with employers who come on campus to recruit students. So Leo mentioned this, we have a couple hundred employers who come on campus for these recruiting events. 
Um, and that's really helpful to, for students to get their foot in the door, to have a conversation. Many of these companies that are in Austin that come back to us um, have, great, have had great experiences with St. Edward students in the past. And so they're so happy with the productivity and um, contributions of our St. Edward students that they try to get more. Um, and so we find that that's, that's amazing. Um, the other thing that we can help you with is applying for graduate school. Uh, and so we have many pre-professional programs uh, such as medical school, law school, um, all kinds of programs where students are applying for fully funded PhD programs after they graduate. And um, those are all options for you as well. And we can help you with that process. David, we also received a question in regards to how international students go about um, getting an internship or part-time jobs. And I don't know if this would be a question for Sarah, if Sarah yeah, can, can, can Great, because I was talking up OPT and I completely forgot about it. So Sarah, why don't you talk about that and how that works for internships, for jobs, and also OPT? Sure, yeah. International students have a lot of um, benefits that come with the type of visa. Um, you can work on campus up to 20 hours a week. I don't think anyone would want to work more than 20 hours a week because there's a lot of um, schoolwork to do too. And that's a really great way to get kind of some early experience to put on your resume um, when you're ready to go out and look for that first internship. Um, every major track at St. Edwards has an internship class that you can take. Um, and that is a really good opportunity to kind of um, have contact with your faculty um, to make sure that you're getting the most out of your internship opportunity. And also that allows you to receive authorization to work off campus. So you can get academic credit and also get paid <laughs> and also get work experience that will benefit you after you graduate. Um, student visa holders get one year of employment authorization after graduating. And our office will work really closely with you on that application. Um, if you're in a certain field, um, a science, technology, a math field, you can apply for an extension uh, for two more years for a total of three years of employment after graduation. I'm happy to talk to anyone um, by email or um, a video meeting if you have any questions about employment or the student visa process, feel free to reach out. And our international students who are here can also tell you that um, uh, there are lots of jobs on campus, as you mentioned, Sarah, for international students, and we help them with that process. Um, you may even be working for the Office of Mission, maybe helping us recruit additional students. You never know what could be happening. So um, plenty of opportunities for working on campus, absolutely. We also received a question regarding, is it easy to change your major? Uh, we talked about the 50 different majors that are available at St. Edwards. You're not applying to a specific major. When you apply to St. Edwards, you apply to the university as a whole. And if you have been admitted, now you get to pursue uh, any major that you wish. You do have a success coach assigned to you at St. Edwards. And so that is someone that's going to be uh, building a connection to you. Are you enjoying the classes that you're taking? Are you being successful? Can we support you with uh, potentially a, a support in um, an, an opportunity for you to reinforce the class? And so know that uh, switching your major is available and you also have the flexibility and opportunity to maybe pursue a couple of interests. It's not uncommon for a student at St. Edwards to also hold a minor. Fidel, did you want to say something about the majors? Yes, um, I changed my major and I think you can do that like um, Mr. Leo said, you absolutely you can do that. All you have to do is really at least what I did, I went to the international students office and told them I'm going to do so. And they changed it on my I-20, something that you want to keep up with because that shows everything, how legal you are in the United States. So make sure you go to them so they can change it and keep everything, your documents up to date. But yes, you can change your major. Yeah, I think we have time for one more question. And, and I really think that this one gets to uh, the heart of what St. Edwards is all about. Uh, the question was, is St. Edwards an only Christian university? 
and if, if people of only one religion can attend. So uh, we are a university that was founded by the Congregation of Holy Cross, which is a, a Catholic congregation of priests and brothers. Um, they began in France and they have a couple of universities throughout the United States. Um, the biggest one being Notre Dame University. Um, and there's also high schools throughout the world, uh, everywhere from Santiago, Chile, to both the east and west coast of the United States. And in all of these institutions, all of these universities, all of these high schools that I visited, I can tell you that the spirit of welcoming people from all backgrounds, all different religions, is one that resonates in each of these uh, institutions. At St. Edwards, you're going to be welcomed you're not only going to be representing a different religion, if you, you hold different religious values, um, you're also going to have space for it and you will also be celebrated. Um, there's no mass that is required at St. Edward's. You're invited to attend, but as you're invited to attend a Catholic mass, you will, you will also be invited by our Hillel Toppers, our Jewish Student Association, to learn about their religious traditions. So know that uh, it is a very welcoming environment. We have over 40 different religions currently represented uh, at St. Edward's, and you're very welcome here. Uh, Sarah, if you have another example of any other um, celebrations that have taken place, I know that you help organize many of them. Sure, well, yeah. Can I say real quick? Really, Leo, if we were on campus today, we would be helping our Muslim students celebrate Ramadan as well. So, you know, this is something, this is a, a truly interfaith campus. And I've been on a lot of college campuses and I have to say that um, maybe the Catholic Foundation of St. Edwards has made this better I don't, I don't, or easier for us to do. But um, I think it's a, it's a little oasis of peace on the hilltop. And correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the rest of you, if you feel the same way. Yeah, I totally agree. And um, I think that you'll see that um, that interest in other religions even being exercised by our campus ministry group. They like to get involved with celebrating other holidays and um, they'll send out messages to the staff like, hey, it's, you know, it's Ramadan. Remember to say happy Ramadan to your students. So um, I think everyone feels welcome here. We have a large uh, Muslim student population. We have a lot of Jewish students from all over the world and um, a lot of other religions, but I can't remember, like Leo said, 40 is a lot of variety. Are there any other questions? Any other last questions you wanted to address, Leo? You got to mute you. Unmuting you now. The question uh, was in regard to the honors program, David, specifically if they're limited to live in one hall uh, until they graduate. And I would ask that you just speak to the honors program in general for those of our, uh, of our attendees that aren't as familiar with the honors program. Sure. Um, so the honors program at St. Edward's is a special program for um, typically around 60 to 70 students in the incoming class. Um, although it is open to everyone who's interested, if you're interested in applying to honors once you arrive at St. Edward's, there's a pathway for you to do so. Um, we have already selected the students who will be entering the honors class this year. It's not necessarily for students who are more, who are high achieving, but it is really, uh, I think, best suited for students who are really into intellectual engagement. Um, so the classes in that, in that program are typically a little bit more in depth, um, oftentimes with very charismatic professors, um, that some, typically for the first and second year, will replace your general education curriculum. So instead of just a class on composition, you may be taking a class on like heroes and literature, something that's a little bit more interesting. Um, but the, the real kind of focus behind the honors program is to help uh, prepare students for research. So um, typically students maybe in the sophomore or junior year will switch to um, having a mentor in honors who's, who's a professor in their major. Um, and the goal behind this is to help prepare students to do research in their major. So every honor student is, is actually um, expected to uh, present a uh, sort of honors uh, thesis presentation. And actually it's really interesting timing because tomorrow this is happening. And we have, I think, 
maybe 60 honor students who will be presenting their um, presentations at a symposium on Zoom all day tomorrow. So there's like five rooms set up for everybody to go in all day long. Um, you are not required to live in uh, honors housing all four years. You're required to live in honors housing just the first year. Afterwards, you'll continue with some honors courses, but the primary honors work will be done individually with your, uh, with your mentor in your major. Thank you, David. We have a, a question. What are the best places to study on campus? And I'm going to ask uh, Liz, one of our current students, to take this one. Hi, so one of the best places to study on campus is the library. You have really good resources. You can go to the um, silent study where it's completely silent in the library. It's a good place when you want to really concentrate. And also you have um, group studies where you have a room and you can go with your group and study for your final or whatever. You have a board and you can write at a board so you can help it helps you studying. And also a place that I like to uh, to study a lot, it's in the nature. I go like to the trees and sit down there and you'll see that all over campus people do study there. It's really re relaxing and calm. Um, but also, um, for example, for, for finals, um, when I stay um, really late on campus, I go to Trusty Hall, there's a study room and it's open the 24 hours. So you can stay up late at whatever time you want. So you have really good resources. And there's also like on Johnson's Hall, there's also another study room. So you have that all over campus and you will find a really calm and good place for you to concentrate and study. Thank you, Liz. And that's absolutely right. Um, the campus doesn't feel like the, the fast moving city that Austin has become. So you really have a place to really focus on your studies. Uh, David, this might be a good question to reiterate uh, the webinar that's coming up. Um, are we going to start classes online uh, in the fall? Thank you for that question. So, um, and thanks for the reminder, Leah. I had forgotten to, to say something about that. Um, if you are an admitted senior, you have likely received an invitation to join us on Tuesday evening um, here in the US for uh, a conversation with our university leadership team. Um, it, it will be a conversation with our provost, Dr. Andrew Paul, uh, the vice president of enrollment, Tracy Manier, as well as the vice president for student uh, affairs, Lisa Kirkpatrick. Um, and they're gonna be talking about the preparedness that we have uh, and plans that are going to be put in place for the fall. I don't have any concrete information to give you right now regarding our plans, um, except to say that we are optimistic that we'll be in person, but just know that our leadership team and I think has been really proactive in thinking about all the various scenarios and contingency plans that may exist. But we're gonna be addressing all of this directly on Tuesday evening. Um, if you are able to join us, that would be wonderful. If you cannot join us, we will be sending out a recording of this session so you get as much information as possible. And also trust that um, we're going to be communicating with you every step of the way. So if you know something does happen that obviously this is a fluid situation, if something occurs where we have to make a decision that we will go online, we will let you know. At this point though, um, we are still uh, optimistic that we'll be able to join in person this fall. But join on Tuesday, that's gonna be a really interesting webinar. Thank you, David. And, and here's a question for you, Sarah. Um, is landing day also, uh, going to be online and how is it different than maybe some of the orientation sessions? Yeah, landing day is a little bit different because it's specifically for international students. Um, we have some updates that we need to make to your immigration record when you arrive in the country. So we collect some copies of your information and um, get some uh, data from you. Um, and we also review the immigration rules and benefits of your status. We're planning for this to be an in-person event uh, on August 18th, but if there's any change in that, we'll definitely let you know. Um, but it should be a really engaging event either way. Students really enjoy it because it's a great way to, to get started and dive into your first semester. Thank you for that, Sarah. And um, I think that this really, uh, we've, we've addressed now 18 questions. You guys have been very engaged. We really appreciate um, 
all, all of your, your questions. It's a good time for us to um, wrap it up, um, but continue to be available to you. Uh, we have Sarah and David and myself available to you. I always wanna say thank you for all of you, to all of you for joining us today, uh, especially to our students, uh, Fidel and to Liz, our global ambassadors who work so hard to um, promote St. Edwards and um, obviously have had an amazing experience on campus. And so thank you so much for helping us out. Sarah, thank you. Um, to all of you who joined, thank you again. We'll be sending a recording of this out later. Um, and if you have questions, feel free to follow up with me, Leo, or any of us uh, individually. We'd be happy to speak with you. Thanks and have a great rest of your day. If it's nighttime, have a good night. Thanks again, everyone.